Okay, now progression number three is going to be elevating the feet. Once you can master the glute bridge, march, get good eight to 10 reps with a nice solid pause on each one at the top, go all the way through your hybrid circuit with that. Then progress on to the next variation of body weight, which is a foot elevated glute bridge. So this is even better. I love this one. We can uh, really get an extra range of motion because now you're you have another whatever that is. This is 18 inches. That's like an inch. So he's got like 17 more inches to go in this movement. So it makes it dramatically more impactful because you're almost doubling the range of motion. So it's a much better movement to practice through your full range of hip extension. So. All he's gonna do is the exact same cues of your regular glute bridge, the curl up version, but he's gonna do so with his feet elevated. So toes turn in just a little bit. Yep, he squares up, he's got a nice alignment, foot and ankle to knee to hip on both sides. I want his knee, just like the glute bridge original in all positions, I want the knee to be outside the first two toes, inside the fifth toe. So that knee is tracking somewhere between the second to fourth digit over the middle of that foot as it lines up at the top. Okay, we'll show another variation where we exaggerate the knee position for the next progression. But he's gonna keep everything in alignment here. Same cues, he's gonna pick up his butt, his tailbone, his pelvis first, and push into his low back. Then he's gonna push into his mid back, like that matrix push kind of thing, as he continues to curl up. Then he pushes into his shoulder blades, then he pushes all the way up into his traps, and you'll notice he gets all the way up, and because of the angle increase, he can really get all the way up to the neck there. And you don't wanna shrug your shoulders into your ears, you actually wanna shrug your shoulders down away from your ears and use your upper arms as needed to give you some extra challenge, or extra support, excuse me. If you wanna add more challenge, you take the arms and you cross them over the chest here. Now, when he goes through his glute bridge now, he doesn't have that extra steering on left and right from his arms, so just go ahead and give me a couple reps here. Curl all the way down, curl all the way up. Get that nice domino effect with the spine. We stack the spine from the top to the bottom, and then we pick it up from the bottom to the top. Good, good. The shaking is totally normal. That's to be expected for everybody, including myself, when I started first learning how to do this movement. The more you go slow, the more you can track, the more you focus mentally, the better it will work, the sooner you will get a good proficient skill at it and smooth it out. Top of the back first, mid back second. Keep that tail curled up even more. Yep. Push the spine down, but keep the pelvis up. Yep, yep, those, that, those little adjustments on the way down. As you're going down, continually checking in with your brain. What information do you have now coming in to your brain based on the change in position, those couple inches you made, just there, doing that. Oh, I feel like I could push my belly button down a little more. I can recurl my tailbone up a little bit more. I dropped a little bit when I made that movement. Whatever it is, you're constantly, same thing with a plank, like it's never a static position per se. You can concentrate on continuing to make little adjustments to make it more effective. Put yourself in better position and contract more muscles to get more work done. More input equals more output, more results. So he's just really focusing on that curl and now it's becoming much more than just a glute ham exercise like it's really working the entire core midsection he's learning how to articulate his spine more efficiently so a lot more core work when we cross the arms too right yeah, yeah. the arms down give you a lot of steering this really makes the side to side transverse abdominis lateral stabilizing system have to activate to keep you in that nice tube instead of falling and uh, crashing so that's the next progression, that's number three, right? Now number four is we take that same foot elevated, or that same glute bridge march, and we just perform it with the feet elevated. So we're gonna come all the way up, curl up into a glute bridge from the top using the box. Now keynote before you start. Keynote is the height of the box will, will change the difficulty of the exercise. So especially considering I'm really making you suffer here, and depending on how long you're working out, how tired you are, if you're not feeling it that day, or maybe you just don't feel strong enough to go straight up to an 18 or a two foot box, start in increments, okay? So the feet can go up six inches. This is 12 here. So if they go up just six inches, it'll only be one notch above a glute bridge march from the floor as far as difficulty. 12 inches now, we're starting to get some more range of motion to play with, that's definitely harder. That 18 was quite a bit, right? Like yeah. 18 inches, like that's pretty high. That's like a standard weight bench that you'd see at the gym, people doing step ups and bench press on. So that was that height where we were just at. Now we dropped it down just a little bit, now we're at 12. So I'm gonna have him do the glute bridge march now. I want you to turn the feet in, get in good position, make sure that knee stays stacked over the third toe. 
Okay, that just slight outward drive with the knees, and then curl yourself all the way up. Use your elbows on this when you're gonna want them. Yep, curl all the way up. Vertical uh, forearm bones, pointing right to the ceiling. Yep, good. Tuck on the chin. Yep, push it in the back of the neck. You can get all the way up there. Yep, back of the delts, back of the chest. Yep, good. Now turn that foot in. Yep, oh, but turn this one in. Yep, even more. Yep. Ooh. Okay, now march. We'll go one knee to the chest, we pause, we come back down. Everything stays the exact same. We squeeze back up in between, and then we go to the other side. Knee to the chest, we pause, we come back down. We re-squeeze the glutes, we squeeze the abs. I call it squishing the sandwich. You know when you see someone squish a bun down on a sandwich? I do that. So you take the sandwich and you go squish it down so you can take a big bite. The abs are the top bun, your glutes are the bottom bun. You're trying to squeeze them both and compress that spine from front to back. That's what he's doing here. So he's, every rep, he re-squeezes tight, to get into the best extension he can and the most braced and stable, most activated, most muscle contracted position. Okay? Then he curls back down, finish that one out. Okay, turn that foot in. It's the same thing. He's always, for him, that's going to be one cue that just is something to focus on in the future is keep turning that foot in, keep turning that foot in. That right foot's going to be out. Feel what it feels like to keep turning it in. Okay, bring it down. Yeah, tailbone stays high, push the mid back down first. Bottom of the rib cage and then top of the low back. That hinge point, just like that dead bug, that same exhale and push down from the from the top of the belly. Yeah. Yeah. Tailbone so stays hovering. Good. It's like that game Moonland. You guys remember that from like 92 or whatever on the DOS computer? You want to decelerate it down and land it as lightly and softly as possible so the muscles are doing all the work and you're not just smacking down on the joints. Okay? So that's our foot elevated. Now we move on. 